things have changed drastically here. Internationally recognized. Aaron, good morning. Thanks for coming back on the show to talk about your latest mission. Well, hi, Tanya. We are between the cities of Aqua and Reykjavik. University of Minnesota professor and explorer Aaron Deering. What we want to do is put a face to climate change. Is a magnet for grant money that funds educational adventures around the world. So my name is Aaron Deering, and he goes, I know who you are. I recognize your voice from the internet. But away from the spotlight, prosecutors say Deering violently attacked a woman. Police arrested him for domestic assault in December when a woman said Deering choked and dragged her inside an apartment they shared in Northeast Minneapolis. Yeah, what do you have to say about these charges against you? There, it's false. You said they're insults? No, I said it's false. The 47-year-old professor had never been charged with a crime before. We are not identifying the victim, but now two other women. He grabs me by the ankles and he drags me across the house. Say the details of that case are painfully familiar. And I remember thinking, I can't breathe. As he was driving his weight into the door, I was on the ground with my feet up. Nina Orizoli says she thought she met the man of her dreams. I would get cards like this all the time that say soulmate. A surprise commitment ceremony in Bali in 2017. He shows up with this. Aaron Deering, the high profile professor, swept her off her feet. What was going through your mind when that happened? That I was the luckiest girl in the universe. But later that same year, Orizoli told St. Paul police that Deering had physically abused her on two separate occasions. Threw him back into this wall. She told officers that during an incident in April, she believed she was going to die. He came home one day and he was um, just over the top drunk and just yelling, slurring. He grabs me by the ankles and he drags me across the house and takes me into the room um, where he beats me. He was on top of me. He had his hand around my neck. Orizoli says she did not initially share those details with police because she panicked and wanted to protect Deering. And when the police walked up, he threw his arm around me and I pretended that he was my boyfriend here to take care of me because an intruder had maybe come in. A decision Orizoli says she would regret months later after joining the professor at a conference in Russia that fall, the couple made a stop in Amsterdam. We were just walking back towards our hotel and he just snapped. Orizoli says Deering beat her in their hotel room off and on for hours. She says she recorded this audio of Deering on her cell phone. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fucking bang this up. I'm gonna bang this up good. Like all I, all I could think of was to just, I just have to get out. I have to get out of here. Um, I mean, this, at this point, he's, he's gonna kill me. Orizoli says she immediately flew back to Minneapolis and took this photo at the airport. Hours later, here at U of M Riverside Hospital, she spoke to police who took this report. Orizoli said Deering grabbed her by the hair and put his hands on her neck, but there was no arrest because the alleged attack happened overseas. While Orizoli was still in the ER, she got these text messages from Deering, including one that read, I'm sorry that I hurt you. It feels like an alternate reality, honestly. But even after Orizoli says their volatile relationship ended months later. Our last altercation was in January. The two accused each other of harassment and assault. I don't know how long it took me to realize, oh my God, I'm a battered woman. I feel like I have a responsibility to say something now. Amy Matthews says Aaron Deering started abusing her after the two married in 2010. We ended up on the floor with him on top of me and his hand over my mouth as I was screaming for help. The worst, she says, came in a hotel room in Miami in 2013. But he leaned over me and he just threw his head down as hard as he possibly could onto the top of my head. So he headbutted me. She agreed to speak with KSTP after Deering's arrest in December. And then when I saw the report and the arrest, and I thought this exactly this is gonna go, how it's gonna go down. Pardon me, Aaron. Back in court last week. Eric, KSTP. And out on bail, Deering had little to say to us. Right. What do you say to the women who say you abused them? Okay, I'm, I need to go, okay? Aaron, I'm asking you because there are other women making some pretty serious allegations. And I think it's important that we get a response from you. I will later. After his arrest in December, the university said it would be reviewing the matter. Now it will only say Deering, a tenured professor, is on leave. U of M's code of conduct requires faculty and staff to be personally accountable for individual actions and to avoid all forms of harassment, threats, or violence. 
We asked whether administrators were aware of any allegations of abuse, but so far the university will only say any such information is private. It's not fun to be sitting here. Now these women who've since become friends and advocates for survivors of abuse. I'm not the first person he abused. I don't believe that I am. And I won't, you know, I wasn't the last. Say their story should put the university on notice. And so we have to talk about it. It's the only way that we can, you know, change things.